Today, I want us to share on a topic called the power of prosperity and stewardship. The power of prosperity and stewardship. Because God has given us in his word, his word as a foundation of a godly and prosperous life. What do I mean by prosperous life? God wants to position you and me in a manner or a state where you are provided and when you, where you can provide for your sustenance and for the sustenance of your family and that in your life you will glorify God. That means the people that look at your life the people that you interact with, they will say, surely there is something different with this person than the rest of us. In the scriptures, we not only learn history, the history of our faith, and the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross, but we learn about the principles that Jesus Christ himself came to reveal to us that when we apply them in our lives, we will be change agents. We will have a difference in our families. We will have a difference in our community. We will make the place where we are better than we found it. If it is in areas of health, if it is in areas of cleanliness, whatever area it is, we will learn the principles and the wisdom of God for an abundant life here on earth and thereafter eternal life. Let me tell you, friends, if you are going to be known for anything, be known for the way you cherish, the way you apply the word of God in your life. You might know the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, it is good for you. You might memorize those words. You might sing them like poetry. But unless you are able to capture the principles, you might be a very good Christian. That means you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You do the things that you are supposed to do religiously. You even come and get your Holy Communion. You give your tithe. You do whatever is required of you. You pray and fast. But until you have applied the word of God in your life. And the word of God comes with many facets. In the book of 2 Timothy 3. 16 to 17, the Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God, this word that God has given us, this word we embrace as the mind and the instruction of God in our lives. Keep the scripture on. It is given to us. The Bible says it, is, it comes to us as an inspiration from God. That means it is God's word to our lives. And it says it is profitable for doctrine. And what is doctrine? Doctrine is a way of thinking. is a belief system that dictates how you do and what you do in your life for results. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. That means when you read the word of God, it sets boundaries for you. When you read the word of God, you understand the mind of God. The word of God by the Holy Spirit is the tutor that trains us on how our lives ought to be. I want to share with you about prosperity, as I said. 
Because it is God's will that all of us should be well. It is the mind of God that you, would, you should not be poor. Although the scriptures say the poor will always be with us. But that poverty is not your portion as a believer. It is not your portion as a, as a servant and a woman of God. God wants to prosper and bless his people materially, financially, and spiritually. In the book of 3 John, verse 2, the Bible says this, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. That means, that means you may succeed. That you may gain wealth. And when I think about it, I ask myself, why prosper? Why acquire wealth? Because we needed to advance God's kingdom here on earth. And as I talk about prosperity, I want to put a disclaimer. Because many times the gospel of prosperity has been bashed or ridiculed by men and women that craft doctrines not for the benefit of the kingdom, but for their benefits. Because in every kingdom, unless you are provided, unless you have material wealth, there is no glory in that which you do. And particularly in Africa, we must preach a gospel that gets its people out of poverty because we have received the gospel of salvation for too long. That means you are saved, you are born again, you are going to heaven. And some of the songs and the music that we sing, not in line, even with the word of God. In Psalms 118 verse 25, the Bible says this, Save now, I pray, O Lord. I pray, save now your prosperity. I pray. What do you pray for in your life? Do you only pray to God to heaven? No. You pray that God will bless you materially. You pray that you will have enough resources to take your children to school, to put food on the table, to have decent clothing. You pray for prosperity when you get saved. Salvation is not all that is all in the kingdom of God. Salvation follows prosperity because pro prosperity shows the glory and the majesty of God. Prosperity shows the majesty and the glory of God. In Psalms 35, Verse 27, the Bible says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. As you pray and seek God to prosper you, as you pray and seek God to provide you, and that your business will expand, and that your knowledge and your wisdom of life will expand, as you pray that God will give you a family, as you pray that God will Increase your area of influence. What is the cause that you are praying for? What is your greater purpose as you pray for God to give you wealth? Because God will surely give you wealth. Because it is his pleasure that you prosper. It is God's pressure, like a good father, that you prosper and do well. The Bible says this, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. God has pleasure in your prosperity. God has pleasure in your wallet being good. 
God has pressure in you doing well in life. Says, the Lord be magnified, which has pressure in the prosperity of his servants. You and me are candidates of God's prosperity. That means in our lives, when people look at us, they are not pitying us. When people looking at, 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 us, at us, they are seeing the works of God. Why? This means this. Number one, God rejoices when you do well in your business. It is an upfront when you are not doing well, when you are not well dressed, when you are not well fed, when you are unhealthy. It does not please God like a father and a good father. He wants you to do well. And so what do you do? Number two, magnify him because the Lord wants you. When he says I have good plans for you, what does that mean? It means the purposes and the intentions of good, God are good in your life. He wants you to do well. And so he says, shout a song of victory. Shout, uh, shout a victory song for your victory. The Lord wants to be a winner. The Lord wants you to excel. And then your heart would be glad. Confess, my God wants me to prosper. The Lord wants his saints to prosper. When I talk about prosperity, I remember my own journey. And I remember how the Lord has worked with me since the days of my youth. As I trusted God for my life. As I trusted God for a family. As I trusted God for the provisions of my life. And I can study here and tell you that God has been faithful. When you talk about the desires of your heart. Because it is only you who knows. That which God has given you, you are the platform that as you cooperate with God, that there will be nothing impossible in your life. In the book of Job chapter 36 and verse 11, one of the conditions of your prosperity, one of your conditions of multiplication and increase, one of the conditions of receiving the blessings of God. The Bible says this, if they obey me and serve me. I know you come to this congregation and you love the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But as you come to this congregation, you ask yourself, what is this that I am doing to advance the kingdom of God in this place called Zimmerman? How am I surrendered to God? In the resources that God has given me, how am I ministering to, to, how am I serving God in my generation? How am I reaching to my neighbor? How am I glorifying God in my enterprise? Whatever it is that I am doing, is my obedience to the Lord and to his word discriminatory? That means I choose what passages of scripture to obey, and I choose which not to obey as the convenience may be. What is it? How are you obeying the Lord? And how do you serve God? As I stand before here, I remember. Because we celebrate 40 years within a short while. Celebrated 40 years of marriage. And I'm sure within a short time, a few months, be celebrating 40 years of this ministry in this area. And I have been a blessing. I have been blessed by this altar. So much so, brethren, that when I come here, I have goosebumps. I feel excited. And I remember the struggles and the challenges that you, the father of this house and the vision 
When God gave him the vision about this church in this area and we stood behind him and served this place that the Lord has been faithful. That all those that served in this, in this congregation that the Lord has moved us from one degree of glory to another. That when we asked ourselves, what is this that we can do to serve the Lord? I remember and I I, 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 I am missing Bishop Jimmy Kimani because he was seated there. I, I look at him and feel good for the testimonies that God has given us together. When you obey and serve God. And I remember one day we had an urgent meeting, an urgent message because somebody wanted to sell a plot that was next to this small building, adjacent building there. And he needed his money in three days. And because he needed his money within a week, we were wondering, what shall we do? But thanks be to God for the prosperity of the saints. Because in our midst, we immediately say, but the Lord has blessed us. And the Lord has given us land. And so... We walk into the bank and immediately, not from outside, we were able to raise over 400,000 Kenya shillings that time, a lot of money. The Lord wants to prosper you and to give you whatever he gives you for the good and for the advancement of the kingdom of God. Because as we read in the scripture, as you prosper, Materially, it is God's desire that you also prosper spiritually. You obey and serve God because in serving God, there is a reward. And he said this, they will spend their days in prosperity and years in pressure. They that obey the Lord and serve the Lord, not only obeying the Lord, but serving the Lord. That means you are anxious what is this that I can do to promote the kingdom of God and the influence of God in my neighborhood and in my place of residence and influence? You are asking yourself, what can I do to glorify God in my place wherever I am? Because in serving God, there is a reward. You spend your days in prosperity. That means whatever it is that you set your heart to do, it shall prosper. That is the promise of God. And when it prospers and the Lord gives you material blessings, then you enjoy that prosperity in pleasure. And what is pressure? The things that delight and make you glad. As you do what you do, you are excited. As you do what you do, you are not dragging yourself into accomplishing the purposes in your life. I will obey the Lord and serve my God. Turn to your neighbor now. It is ideal for you to make a confession. I will obey and serve my God. For then I will spend my days in prosperity and in, in prosperity and my ears in pleasures. And this is my heritage. And this is my promise. Now after the Lord has blessed you, after the Lord has answered your prayer, and you find yourself, you are praying for a job, and God has given you an opportunity. And you find you are having good money. And you find you are living in a good house. And you find you are driving a car, not to take you from point A to B, but to make a statement in Zimmerman. If you know what I mean. And you are living in a house, not just to sleep in, but just a house that glorifies God. And when people look at you, they can say, surely God has visited this gentleman. When the Lord does that, remember that the Lord your God 
It is he that gives you the power to make wealth. It is he that gives you power even to enjoy what you have prospered in. You know, the Bible says also that you can make money and God denies you the opportunity to enjoy it. What a tragedy that can be. The scripture tells us this, that God owns everything. Remember yourself. You are owned by God. We belong to God because it is he that made us. It is he that created us. In Psalms 24 and verse 1, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you belong to God. You are not your own. And everything that you have belongs to God. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says this, You are so, Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. You know many times we want to be glorious. What does glorious mean? It means we appear spreaded. That means we appear well suited for whatever occasion that one might be. And the Bible says, the Lord, you ask is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted above all. What is your priority in life? Do you acknowledge God as the provider, as the owner of all things? In the book of Haggai, chapter 2 and verse 8, the Bible says, Silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord. The money that you earn, because it is God who gives you the power to make that money and to earn that wealth, it is the Lord who multiplies the seed for you. So that he can give you seed. So that he can give you food for your family. All that you have belongs to God. And it is good for you. However little that one is. For you to know this. If you want God to entrust you with bigger things. If you want God to entrust you with millions. You must be faithful in the little that God has given you. The testimony that I did not complete before about us looking for money. When we wanted to get money, the Lord had given me a property. And I gave to Bishop Kimani. And we walk to the bank. And we get money. Because there is one thing I knew. That who who gives to the Lord willingly. The Lord is not a debtor to any man. For every beast of the forest is mine, says the Lord. And the cattle on a thousand hills. That means you and your cows and your land. And all that belongs to you. It is the Lord's. And if you want to prosper and do well, I want to tell you this. First, you must honor the owner. You must work for the owner. And you must be faithful in the little that God has given you in order to be entrusted with much. In the book of Luke chapter 16, 10 to 13, the Bible says this, that faithfulness is required in stewards, managers, and their obligations that come with it. He who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. Brethren, let me tell you, 
Do you know you have no right or claim whatsoever to be a robber in the house of God? You know who are robbers in the house of God? There are people who do not pay their tithes. There are people who look at their salaries and say mine is too small. Uh, if I pay this, the less will not be enough for my, for my rent and my obligations. And the Bible says, if you eat the Lord's tithe, it is wickedness. It is required of all managers that they be faithful in the little that God has given them. Brethren, let me remind ourselves that everything that we have belongs to God. And because it belongs to God, we are only stewards. We are only managers. And when we are faithful in the little that God has given us, then he has promised to reward us. God wants, God wants his people to be faithful. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1 and 2, that it is required of stewards that they should be found faithful for their master. They should be found faithful. Ask yourself about your faithfulness. Because your faithfulness will depend how far you go in life. If you start your business, and it is a small business, and you start squandering the money and the stock even before it makes benefit, it will not help you. What about the things that God entrusts you with? Are you faithful in your business? And you are saying, I have made 2,000 shillings today and I cannot eat that 2,000 shillings because if my business is going to grow, I must set aside. I cannot change my eating habit right away. I must save because I have a vision for my business. Be faithful with what you have uh, and with what you and where you are, never look at yourself and say, myself, I cannot be able to tithe. Never look at my, yourself and say, I cannot be able to help anybody. Because you are able, wherever you are. Yesterday we went to a function, and our friend of ours was giving a hundred cows to hundred widows. Just people, out of the generosity and the vision that God had given him, he mobilizes a hundred widows in a county and says, these people, all or each one of them, I want to change their lives. And he actually does that. Not out of abundance, but out of the reserves of his heart. Are you there and you are saying, myself, I do not have anything? I used to there and saying myself, I cannot do anything. Let me tell you that God has given you what he has given you to be faithful. Once you are faithful in the little that God has given you, let me tell you, you will not have enough room to store what God gives to you. Number two, God will prosper you so that you can provide for your families. In 1 Timothy 5 and 8, the Bible says, But if one does not provide for his family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Wow! If you cannot provide for your family, the Bible says you have denied the faith. If you cannot provide for your family, you have denied the faith. Because immediately you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. I told you in Psalms 118 and verse 25 that salvation, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, is a step towards prosperity. You are saying, I am ready to prosper. I am ready to excel. I am ready to do well. I am ready to move on. You provide for your family. You don't sleep and wait on God. No, you move out and God orders your steps. 
You rise up early and ask God, what is this that you want me to do? Because God has a purpose and a good reason for you. Third, how do you invest? When God has given you a talent, how are you using it? When God has given you a mind, how are you using it? It is up to you to rise up and say, I want to be a good steward of the talent that God has given you, me. Some of you went to school and you graduated. And after graduating, you said you have finished the school. The last time you read a book is when you did your last exam. And God has given you a talent called reading, adding value to yourself, opening your mind to the rest of the world and the systems. Let me tell you as I, as I conclude. We have Asians in America that come with only $100. And when they come, they apply the principles of the kingdom of God, and they are not godly. They deny themselves for a while. They study the systems. They study how do you make money. They study how do you begin a small restaurant. How do you start a, a hotel? Today, the poor Asians come to America and within a few years, they own 20% of the hotels in the United States of America. Why? If you don't apply the business principles of the kingdom taught in this world, you'll be a very poor and miserable Christian. You'll enjoy your life in heaven but on this earth, you will be a beggar. May the Lord help you to know how to invest in the resources that God has given you. And I have said this before. If you have just 1,000 shillings, it is possible for you to start your own business. Don't wait to start to buy Intercontinental Hotel. No, start with a small kiosk, sell something, do something so that you don't even come to the house of God empty-handed. And you don't go to your children and tell them, there is nothing that I can offer to you today. No, wake up and rise up because it is God's pleasure and purpose to prosper you. Don't bury your talent. The Bible is, tells about a, 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 a parable. Jesus tells a parable of about men that were given one five talent, the other two and the other one. One of them went and buried it. Never did anything with it. Let that not be your lot. In your wealth and in your gifting, make networks. Make networks. Buy somebody a cup of tea. And let him talk to you. Buy somebody a cup of coffee or a dazi and ask them how business is going. Use the resources that God has given you. What about helping the poor? God requires to give to the poor. James 1 and verse 27. True and pure religion is to minister to the poor and the orphans and the fatherless. What is it that God has given you? Whose life are you changing? Because all that you have is not yours. It belongs to God. Open your heart wide. God wants to bless you. God wants to move in your life in a very special way. Let me say this. That the way to practice your life is to be real to yourself and be real to God. God knows every detail of your life. When you go to God to pray, don't be embarrassed to say, to tell God, Lord, I am lazy. Lord, I have fear in me. Even to try anything 
in my life. Because God wants to bless you. You don't want to be in a situation where God will say, I was hungry and you gave me no food. Our God is a giver and he wants to prosper you. Our God loved you so much that he gave his only son that whomever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Our God is a giver. And he is a giver to teach us how to give and how to be good stewards, to give your energy, give your love, give your life. And God, who is a rewarder of those that seek him diligently, will reward you. All those things I have shared with you belong to those that are of the kingdom of God. Probably you are in our midst and you have not known Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have no entitlement to claim anything in this book. But if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, all these promises are yours. If you are in our midst and you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ, would you please, uh, let us all rise up, let us all rise up. If you are in our midst and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, our priest lays up your hand wherever you are. If you are in our midst and you have not known the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please lay up your hand because I want your life to be different. Is there somebody there? Priest lays up your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. It is God's will that you prosper and do well. If you are sick and you want the Lord to touch you and heal you, the Lord wants you to be healed. Because if you are, not, if you are unwell, you cannot work. You cannot do the things that you are required to do. And so if you are there and you are unwell, I want to pray for you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. Our Father and our God, we bless your name. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you because you want to do us well. We want to thank you that you want to give us salvation. Because only salvation ushers us in to prosper. And without prosperity, we have no stewardship. Without resources, we have no stewardship. Our Father and our God, I pray that everyone under my voice, O oh God, you'll open the windows of heaven and pour your blessings upon their lives. Those that have not known you as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you'll touch them. Yes, you'll convict them, O oh God, by your Holy Spirit to yield their lives to you for the glory and honor of your name.